Welcome to video number three, and I'm going to make you a vegetarian yet news. Um, a plant that I used to work at, a poultry plant, has been closed. Uh, they announced they've closed it uh, due to an outbreak of, you know what, uh, they've closed her down. Um, and I'm, I'm not sure how you fix this. Now, first off, I've got something that really shouldn't be that far. I'm just trying to just come up with just a general, yeah, that's right, I'm using the whiteboard again. Yeah. So poultry and, and beef and pork are completely different. So you, you can't have poultry and beef in the same plant. You can't. Now somebody asked in the last video about cross-contamination and why does it matter? Why it matters is because people have food allergies. And if you're picking up beef, it has to be 100% beef. If there's pork in it and you don't tell them and they get sick because of some kind of bacterial bacteria from the pork that's not supposed to be in beef, you're going to get shut down and you're in deep trouble, and then you're all over the news, and you're all out of work. So uh, cross-contamination is an issue. Now, with poultry, uh, honestly, it's all kind of disease-ridden. But I'm going to tell you this right now. Poultry's nasty, but in my experience from having dealt with the beef side of things and the poultry side of things, because they know poultry is full of bacteria and all that other wonderful stuff, they monitor it much more closely. I, I have more confidence as a consumer if I'm buying chicken or, or duck or, or poultry in general necessarily than I do with beef. And, and that's just my opinion. That may be different from different plants. But, you know, CFIA is, is very hands-on in both situations. And I'm talking about the Canadian Food Inspection Agency. Uh, there's some great CFIA inspectors. And, and yet there are some, some areas where they can't be there all the time. So there are certain areas where I've said, you know what, I, I do trust more of the poultry and it's because of time. So you're going to have your, your birds come in live in the morning. And when you're working at, and I mean, for me, it was a duck farm. It's changed now. Now it's mostly the Chinese chickens they do. And, um, which is good because duck, you know, depending on the time of year, there's just no demand for duck. Uh, but you hear the birds coming in and it's noisy. So even though I worked on this room, this was called the, the vis room. So here you've got, here, and they do call it this, they do, the kill floor. And this we just called the vis room. And then here you've got your packaging. And then here you have, uh, you got your frozen here. And then over here, you'll have your your orders go here if they're not going straight onto the truck. So you get your, your trucks are out here. So your, your birds come in to go to the kill floor. If I had been told, okay, Shannon, you're going to the kill floor, you're going to kill these birds, I would have lasted five minutes. There's no way. There's no way I couldn't have done it. If, if I had been on the, the wax machine where you're taking all the, the feathers off the birds... Uh, coming out through the hot wax. I don't know if I would have made it through that either. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I really don't know. I know that then once they come through the wax, they then immediately start getting refrigerated. You're immediately um, starting to look at refrigerating them. Because again, the longer that they're warm, the more bacteria can get going. And you have to be obsessed with making sure that's not the case. Constant temperature checks constant safety checks, CFIA is all over it. This is part of the reason why I really trust poultry. So it ends up kind of in a bin here before getting sent onto the line. And once it starts coming down the line, you're going to have, let me see if I can remember, you've got uh, the tails coming through. So that's, that's gland. Okay. If you don't want to end up being a vegetarian, if this stuff bothers you, the details, you might want to click off now. If you don't mind the details, stick around. So you've got, you've got the gland removal here, and then you've got the, basically you cut a slit in the neck, and there's there's the windpipe. So you're taking the windpipes out. You normally have two people removing the windpipes. Then you have somebody else who has a really sharp knife that has to cut up the middle. Now, if you cut into the intestines, ugh, ugly stuff happens, and you might end up with a bird that's no good. Or at the very least, it's got to get cleaned up. And then you've got two people who are eviscerating. Again, this is how it was set up when I worked there. I don't know this is still the setup. I'm just going by what I know. Then you have your inspector here. The inspector here is to make sure that all of these people did their job properly. The inspector here is saying, all right, this isn't clean and would routinely pull stuff off the line. Now, in some cases, 
Uh, you have birds that are that are sick that have certain illnesses that they can pick up. And there are times where if you're viscerating, you've been there long enough, you can actually look at, at a bird and go, yeah, this is no good. Show it to CFIA and just throw it away. They have a trough right here and the birds go in the trough. That trough gets uh, gets shunted to the side. When I worked there, uh, all of that meat ended up going to the mink farm. And the mink, mink farm would ground all that up and feed it to the minks. So nothing gets wasted. One thing that's important to note about the, the meat industry, nothing gets wasted. Uh, and the, the plant I was in, the fat that we trimmed off, that got sent off somewhere else and it would get treated and it would get put into other meat products. Nothing goes to waste. So now, on after the inspector, you've then got, you know, three people here that are that are uh, taking out uh, their there's there's tongues with the ducks. Duck tongues were apparently big in Chinatown, and then over here you have uh, lungs. So birds have their lungs on the back. So you'd have you'd have the the vacuum right there, and then over here you're you're cutting the feet because chinatown again where all of the birds ended up going was chinatown for the most part some of them were local but most of them goes to chinatown um feet they like duck feet they do and so you'd, you'd cut the feet off i mean you're not going to leave the feet on the birds anyways and then you'd throw them into bins that were back here that were filled with ice water and one of the best things about <laughs> i'm gonna admit this now and and people who worked with me back then may have known this there were days where there might be somebody working in one of these spots that i wasn't really a huge fan of so i'm cutting feet and i knew how to fling the birds so you get a really tight tight rotation it would hit that ice water and splash people now the best thing is if the guy who's moving the bins in and out of the room is somebody you really want to sp splash them you're you're going to get your opportunities especially if he puts too much water in it where it's like oh there's a lot of water in that tank isn't there i'll get them and if you're over here, usually the viscerators are also going to be males. They're going to be guys working there. And, of course, that's totally a guy thing. Hey, guys, guys, he put too much water in the bins. Watch. And then they get a good laugh, and you get a good laugh, and he gets a mouthful of really disgusting water. Um, but that's that's the situation. Now, they've been closed down, and Fraser Health has said they want them to work safely. You can't work six feet apart. Can't. Um, so it'll be, you know, it'll be interesting to see what they do because again, the line has to run at a certain speed, like I said, with beef and with pork, or there's no point in running. And then going from, from the kill to being in the cold water has to be a very short period of time. You can't run the kill and then just pile up birds and say, all right, we're going to run the kill and then we're going to run the, no, you have to have those birds in cold water and, or. I know they were putting in a chill tunnel. What a chill tunnel does is you put the birds in the tunnel and it's just, it's it's a really cold. It just, as the, when they come out the other side of the tunnel, they're good to go and you can pack them. So when I did it, it was, it was, uh, it was ice water. I know that now they're using a chill tunnel in there as well, I believe. Last time I talked to somebody from there, they're using a chill tunnel. So you throw them in the tunnel, they come out the other side and they go over to packaging. So when they go over to packaging, again, it's time. You have very limited time and you have to temperature check the birds. So... You're constantly temperature checking to make sure they're below a certain temperature. And if they're not, and if you can't get them down to the right temperature, that's where CFIA gets involved and they have to make some decisions. So again, they have to remain a certain temperature and below, and then you're throwing them in the bags. You're making sure there's no air in the bags. If there's too much air in the bags, you're going to get yelled at. I get yelled at regularly if I was chatting and didn't realize there was too much air in the bags. So when I worked there, it was you would work in this room and then after you were done with all of those, you would just have tanks of ice water everywhere. They'd be in the frozen area. They'd be in here. There was another room here, which is also used for orders. They'd be underneath the shelves where the orders were. And again, that was kept at a certain temperature. And you might have 15 tanks. So after we were done in here, I would always say, how many tanks do we have left? 12. Oh, crap. Because it was about a half an hour a tank. So you'd be like, oh, really? Maybe 20 minutes. If you had everybody running at optimal speed, you might get a tank done in 20 minutes. And uh, it, it it was frustrating when you'd get done and you'd, you'd hear, well, there's still 15 tanks. 15? God, no. So uh, as, as time went on and the longer I worked there, the more staff they had with the idea of 
getting more of the packaging done while we were working in this room. As soon as, as soon as those birds were cold, they'd start packaging and they'd have almost a full crew. So that when we were done, we might have five or six tanks left. And at that point, I'm like, all right, yeah, that's better because that's only a few hours of work rather than your day's just starting. You got another eight hours to go. And then it's got to be on the truck and going. And then you've got you've got your frozen here. There was another freezer in this area as well. And sometimes part of the problem was how how many are going in the freezer. Now, I talked about in the last video, I talked with, with pork and beef and how, you know, it's fresh. You can keep it fresh. This, you can't keep fresh for very long at all. I really, really can't. Poultry, really can't. Uh, so if it's not going out, you're going to be freezing it. Now, the birds that come in... I'm pretty sure it was around six weeks. I think it was six six to eight weeks old. That that may be wrong. It may be more weeks than that, but they were about six weeks old. There's a reason for that. You've got to get them before they start before their feathers start coming out, before they start all the preening stuff. Because then then you're never going to get the feathers out. you you put them through the wax, and then there's just little, and then you end up having to in in this room instead of this room. Now you're stuck plucking feathers they give you tweezers and you've got to tweeze out every single feather uh-huh and it's just as tedious as it sounds now with this plant closed down what happens to all the barns full of birds they're going to get older they're going to get bigger now with your orders the orders for poultry are when i was there it was always by weight so your cases had to be a certain weight you didn't want to have a bunch of really large birds. You didn't want to have a bunch of really small ones. The really small ones especially because nobody bought them. But the really big ones, that makes them more expensive. And people don't want to spend a whole ton of money on ducks or Chinese chickens all the time. I will say this though. The Chinese chickens that we did when I worked there, best chicken I ever had. Uh, absolutely. Uh, there was one time, and this was when I, I, you know, I obviously didn't have a YouTube channel. And I had two young kids at home. And uh, money was tight. So we were allowed to have, we could go upstairs and say, I'm going to take two chickens. They would sign them out and you could bring them up and prove it on your way out. And you just go into shipping. But uh, I actually had the experience, this was great, where uh, once the birds came through the window, I chose them. So I went, all right, I want that one and I want that one. So I, I viscerated it. I, I cropped it, which is taking out the windpipe. I did everything to it and I bagged it and I, you know, I, I did everything with those birds so that when they got home, the only one that had touched them after they got through that window was me, which was great. So they tagged them off and that was great. Uh, and it was the best chicken I've ever had because it was never frozen. Huge difference between chicken that's been frozen and not frozen. So anyways, um, I, I do wonder, because with the packaging, we always had, and it was a small table, you had three people on each side of the table and then you needed an extra four people in the room because you have to weigh them so every bird that comes up you have to weigh them and when you're working on that scale you got to be fast you've got to be like like the, the number comes up and you got to be fast if you're looking going okay it's that one take another one okay it's that one take this okay it's that if you're that slow you're going to be off of there in about 30 seconds you've got to just be like and and it gets to the point where you kind of know the weight when you pick it up. So you pick it up and go, that's a heavy one. And okay, that's a light one over there. And eventually you don't even have to weigh some of them. And then the problem you get is, because <laughs> you're weighing them through the window, you might weigh them too hard and you might hit somebody in the hand. I did that more than once and I felt bad because then their hand is getting nailed with a bird and they're hitting it back on the, the metal bins. Yeah, and and there's, there's staples too that are in there. So if the staple catches and they slam, don't do that. This is another one of those jobs that uh, you're going to find a lot of entry-level workers. You're going to find a lot of foreign workers. You're going to find a lot of people who can't afford to miss work. You're going to find a lot of people who won't call in. Who And and I know when I worked there, they had a bonus uh, that if, if you didn't miss a day, it was $125 you got uh, at the end of every month. And if it was three months, I think it became 150 I know it was 100 and then they, they cranked it up a little bit because $100 eventually people are like, oh, I'll give up $100. But once you get into like $150 a month, there were guys who would who would speed almost twice the speed limit to make sure they weren't late for work, who would be just booking it to get into the building and screaming, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here, and make sure they hit their punch card in time. Um, 
I, I don't think that those incentives go away. There were times where that bonus was the difference between being able to pay my rent and my bills and not being able to pay it. And people wonder why I'm um, very, very grateful to be a YouTuber now. Uh, th this, this is a job that's tough. Now, for the shipper, because we only had one when I worked there. Usually it was one guy in shipping and there might be one other guy helping him. Because once we get everything all packed up and it's all in boxes, well, he's just got to box it up and throw them on the truck and there was usually one maybe two trucks in, a, in any given day and and it was nowhere near as busy as what we had uh at my that the other plant i worked at where we might be loading up four or five 18 wheeler uh trucks uh this was usually just one small truck that you might see from any meat packing store in in your local town if you see those you know those small box butcher trucks those were usually the kind that we were we were using too uh, any butcher shop We'll have those usually. I know Johnson's and Chilliwack has some same size as what we used, and then eventually it, you know, you you may they they may be using the eighteen wheelers now. I don't know. And it's been a long time since I quit there. I'm just going by what I knew, um, and and so trying to have it so that you have six feet in between people. Like I'm trying to think. So you'd have one guy doing the kill, and then you'd have man, how many did they have? I'm just trying to think of it off the top of my head. Because we had about 45 people. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70, 71, 72, 73, 74, 75, 76, 77, 78, 79, 80, 81, 82, 83, 84, 85, 86, 87, 88, 89, 90, 91, 92, what that meant was every now and the boss would be like, oh, I'm going to put Shannon on a job he can't do because he's short. So at first when I was learning how to eviscerate, I had to stand on a stool. Well, that was fine until I'd get behind and then I'd be like leaning off the stool and almost falling over. So eventually I went, no, screw this. And then I learned to do it without the stool. And then they raised the line by about four inches. I was like, seriously, I was already short enough for it as was. Now you're raising the line. Of course, everybody thought that was hilarious. And then... Um, uh, vacuum, vacuuming out the lungs. That was a job that was not made for me. Just killed my shoulder. Because again, right, whereas you're supposed to be down here, I'm up here because I'm shorter. Just killed. And, and that was even with, they gave me a step stool for that too. Yeah, good luck. Uh, eventually I got half decent at it. I was never great at it though. I was never great at that one. Uh, cutting the feet off, that was easy. That didn't involve my height. And then stacking was where the boss would, would get a laugh. He'd be like, oh, I'm going to put Shannon on stacking today. And I remember... One of my supervisors going, yeah, he's going to throw in stacking today. I'm like, what? Because that's that's throwing. Now, the the um, basically the orders were all being thrown onto shelves. The shelves started above my head. So the shelves were about yay high. And then you're stacking about 10 high on top of that. So you're having to get up on these really rickety steel steps that you're moving around. And you're having to remember which order goes where. So certain sizes of, 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 uh, um, of boxes were going in certain spots. And you had to get good. You had to be flinging them from the floor. And you had to be able to twist them, fling them, and make sure you're hitting them and make sure they're all landing in line. Yeah. And then me being Mr. Smart Guy, I was like, I'm going to show him I can do it. And I, I did. And then that was my job. So he kind of made it like a sarcastic thing. Like, I'm going to make him stack. And then, and then I was really good at it. And then they're like, guess what? That's your new job now. And I was like, oh, I want to die. Because it was really hard. I was so much short. I was like six inches shorter than most of the other guys that did it. You know, and it was like, seriously, they've got a f half a foot on me. It's so much easier for them, especially once you get up close to the ceiling. So now I'm throwing them up and, and forward. And if they don't quite go to the wall, well, now I got to crawl up on top of like, Yeah. And meanwhile, there's boxes backing up and somebody yelling at me, Shannon, boxes are backing up out here. You better come out and get them. And people wonder why I'm happy I'm a YouTuber. Um, I'm not saying this is how they do it now. I'm just saying that if that had hit when I worked there, um, and, and I, I saw in the article that they, they employ over 100 people now. And notice I've only got 40 on the board here. And uh, yeah, they employ, employ over 100. I think they now run in shifts. But there's only a certain amount you can run. You can't do 24-7. Every now and then I would see, oh, they're going to start. And I know with my other job, it was they're going to start doing it 24-7. And I would just say, no, because you have to sanitize. 
you have to sanitize, you have to have downtime so you can sanitize the building because if you don't sanitize and clean, uh, CFIA is going to say no, that's that's not going to happen. Uh, I'll, I'll keep a close watch on this because again, think about it from this point too. If somebody working right here, so somebody who's, like I said, cropping, and I did that, that's easy enough pulling out windpipes. Uh, if you're, you're pulling it, and I say easy enough, but man, it just kills you by the end of the day if you're doing that for more than two hours. But if you're sick here and, and there's not that much space between these sides, you could easily, uh, cough and it would reach people on either side here. And then you're going to have to worry about you're in close quarters here, here, you're within six feet. I'll say you're within six feet of that number of people. So if we're going to buy the six feet thing, that's one, two, three, four, five. And then you go into the packaging room next. And if you're here, that's another one, two, three. And across the table, which is not very wide, you got another three. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's just 10 people just off the top of my head right there that you could potentially get sick. And that's not including the cafeteria, which is a common area. And it happened. And there were many times where the flu would run through the place and it would get kind of brutal. So here's to hoping they're not closed down for too long, but you're you're going to hear as much about poultry plants as you will with the other meat plants. And uh, seeing that the one I used to work at is closed, it's again, it's one of those days where I'm very grateful that I'm, I'm here. And it is a luxury that I'm here. And so for people who are out there and uh, are doing this work, um, stay as safe as you can. Uh, I know that, that the old plant I was working at, apparently they're wearing face shields and they're wearing masks as well. Good. Uh, there are certain jobs I used to do there where I'm thinking, I don't know how a face shield would work with that. And I do wonder if all the workers are necessarily going to take that completely seriously. There are some who I would imagine might just have the face shield on. And as soon as the supervisor walks away, they're like, man, I can't do this. This is tough. And certain jobs that would definitely be more difficult with that kind of safety gear on. So uh you know we'll we'll see how all of that goes uh so yeah here you go the poultry side of it i'm gonna be happy when i can talk about something else but again uh, i did this for seven and a half years and when i went <laughs> when i went out to work there everybody was like ah you're not gonna last there nobody lasts there and i was like i'm gonna show you guys and then seven years later i went i, I quit there and i thought you know i'm not sure i proved anything to anybody i think i was the sucker in this because i stayed for seven years but it was you know, it was a it was a full time paycheck. It was it was a half decent job. The only problem I had was that from April through June there weren't any hours. I know that's changed now. That's part of the reason they switched over to chicken because duck. Basically, as soon as Chinese New Year passes, duck sales would fall off a bit, and then once you get into the spring, they were just gone. So you might you might see uh, a big day for us was was thirty five hundred ducks that we would do. And that would be basically your standard through Christmas and through Chinese New Year. And then in the spring, you might have 2,100, 2,000, 2,200. And you'd see that on the board and you go, wow, we're doing 2,200 today. Okay. And it'd be a five hour day. You'd be done in five hours. So uh, I know that's not a problem they have now. I know their hours are longer and uh, hopefully they're not closed for too long. Cause remember they have to process those birds. It's a problem we're seeing in the states where the meat's not getting used. So, what are you gonna do? And and they're 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 paying to feed. The feed has still got to be used. So, uh, I I I do wonder about culling the herds. How they're gonna do that? And yeah, this is this is something that's definitely gonna be happening elsewhere. So, and again, I'm I'm just gonna mention these rooms have to be separate. This room, this is a hot room. This is where you're working in a t-shirt. And, and you're baking, this room is freezing cold, and this room's colder than that. And then shipping is about the same temperature as your eviscerating room. Because again, you've got to have, you know, it's got to be, sometimes in that packaging room, you just freeze all day. You'd just be shaking. And, you know, if you're wearing a hoodie, you'd have your hood up. You'd just be just, just shaking because you're so cold. Um, and then, you know, if you've been cutting feet off and you, you, you nailed the guy who had the, the, the ice tanks uh, earlier in the day, and then you're and then you're down here and you're kind of pinned in the back corner of the room and he remembers you splashed him all morning he might start throwing ice balls at you so sometimes karma came back and bit me there were times where to be hey Shannon remember when you hit me with that 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 ice and water this morning you thought that was really funny 
Yeah, we can just forget all about that, can't we? No, I don't think we can. It'd be a cold day for you. And if, if they hit you with the ice in the face, and if it went down the inside of your hoodie, that was a victory for them. And all you could do was go, well played. All right. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching, for all your support. And um, we'll we'll see how things go. Uh, the one the one thing that, that I keep watching, too, is I do live near a, 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 a long-term care home for, for elderly. To this point, there hasn't been a positive case out of that. I'm very happy about that because, again, um, you know, keeping everybody safe right now is, is key. But, uh, you know, we'll, we'll get through. We'll get through. Thank you guys so much for all your support. It means a lot. And, again, for people who are working in this environment, it's tough. But, again... Uh, you know, if you, you want to end up being a vegetarian, that's totally understandable. I can't do it personally. I just, it's not, not my thing. Um, although I, I did it when I worked at summer camp at one point and who knows while I'm walking down memory lane with these videos, maybe I talk about my time at summer camp as well. Cause I have some entertaining stories from, from summer camp. Definitely to, to the point where I, I will admit there's somebody on my Facebook friends list who was briefly my girlfriend at summer camp. And uh, that's quite the story as well. So, um, yeah, that's and and yeah, which is which is weird. A lot of weird stuff when you look at Facebook and you, Facebook and you look at your friends list. You're like, I don't know how. And then you look at people you're, that are not in your friends list, and you look at them and you think that's really strange. All right, thanks again for all your support, and uh, I am very very grateful to the subscribers that I have on this channel and the main channel because it it has allowed me to provide content for people every day and to provide people kind of a break from some of the stuff going on outside and uh, i never have a day where i take any of it for granted that's why i make videos every single day thank you guys so much for that for for giving me this this forum and this this ability to um to to provide content daily and so i will keep doing that for as long as i'm able to do so thanks again for all your support do hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through you just happened upon this video i will talk to you guys again soon